Welcome back. Let's carry on with our lesson. Okay, so we've had a look at biological concepts. We've looked at how to interpret uh, a phylogenetic tree. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at our place in the animal kingdom um, and where we fit in. Okay, characteristics also that we have that are common to humans and apes. All right, so let's have a look at this diagram. Um, we can see that um, it's the animal kingdom, so it's classification, and classification you learned um, in grade 10 and you learned in grade 11. You did a little bit of classification. So it's actually important that we know, we understand, and for grade 12 and for human evolution, you must know which family humans live in, uh, belong to, and you must also know um, the genus and the species. And not just for humans, for human ancestors as well. You must be able to name the genus and you must be able to name the species. All right, so let's have a look at this diagram here. Um, and we see, so we have the animal kingdom as opposed to the plant kingdom or fungi or monera or protista. Um, and we have a look at, we're going to look specifically at animals. And here's where we trace our lineage or our where we are, where humans are. Um, we fall under the category vertebrates, which means that there is a vertebral column or a backbone. Okay, so those are all organisms that are, have a backbone as opposed to our other organisms like insects and those kind of organisms that are invertebrates. Okay, then vertebrates are divided into five classes, you know that, uh, where we have reptiles, we have fish, we have frogs, we have birds, but we're going to look at specifically the class mammals or mammalia. Okay, so we're part of mammals, the mammal group, um, and that, uh, so that's, where, that's our class. Then we specifically fit into the order primates, as I mentioned previously, uh, um, humans along with apes are found in the primates. So yeah, we have humans um, and apes, the great apes. Okay, then our suborder is Anthropodia, and then we specifically belong, and this is where you need to know, is we belong to the family Hominidae. Okay, so we must know that name. We must know that we belong to the family Hominidae, and Hominidae includes orangutans, gorillas, chimps, and humans. So it's all of the apes as well as humans. So it is the hominids that we find in the family Hominidae. Hominids. Okay. Right. Um, okay, so there are, I've said, human evolution, you need to know the difference between a family name, a genus, and a species. Okay, now modern humans, they have the scientific name. So the scientific name of humans is Homo sapiens. Okay, now um, the word Homo or the term Homo means man and sapiens means wise. Okay, and this is where we have been named from. So those are considered part of the animal kingdom. Right. So the classification of, of humans is according to the Linnaean system. So it was Carl Linnaeus um, who, who um, developed this classification system. Um, and we can see on the next slide, we'll see this classification. Okay, so here we start off with the kingdom Animalia. So we said we fall under animals, the animal kingdom, in the class mammals, mammalia. And very important to remember is that mammals have certain characteristics. And this is how we classify. We have a look at um, an organism and we have a look to see what characteristics they have and then see what characteristics they have in common with other organisms. And when we see that they have common um, characteristics, we can then classify them into a specific group. Um, and that's basically how um, scientists, biologists, 
actually classify organisms, especially if they find a new species. Then they have a look to see uh, what characteristics it has in common with others, and then they would place them into a specific category. Okay, so here in the class mammalia, we say mammals, we know mammals give birth to live young, so that's the first characteristic. And then they also feed them on milk, so they are nourished uh, on milk. All right, so, um, and then we find organisms or um, humans are then in the order primates, and we spoke about primates. And the important thing, characteristic here, is they have an opposable thumb on a hand that has five fingers. Um, and it has fingernails, doesn't have claws, there are two eyes facing forward, etc. So there are lots of characteristics that then are unique to the primate group. And because of those characteristics, we are then placed into that order. The next uh, level of classification is family. Um, and there, we, as we said, we fall, fall into the classification of, uh, or the family of hominidae. Um, and this name you must know. Um, and it is humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans that be belong in this family. And then specifically our genus is Homo, which we said means man, and species, which is wise. So we belong in the Homo sapiens uh, group. Okay, so that's how we are classified. So we start at the largest group, um, and we look at the, the characteristics of the largest group. Then we move to the second group. So this would be the first group. This is the second group. Then we move on to the third group. So each time uh, we, the, the, we move down and, and move to another um, f uh, classification level, we then are getting more and more specific with the characteristics. So the characteristics then become more specific um, and so we, we make the groups or we um, define, if you like, the organism's classification. Okay, so here we can have a look at um, the hominin. Okay, and this is specifically because we said that hominins are just um, humans. There are no apes here. Um, and if we have a look, this is the hominin family tree. It's a very simple version. And the nice thing about this diagram is it's drawn as a tree. So it represents, uh, it, we can see nicely, you know, the different branches and the different uh, species that we find that we need to study. And if we have a look on this side, on the, the left-hand side of the diagram here, um, we can see the time scale. And we start in the past, and it goes back as far as 6 million years ago, um, and then it goes up to today. Okay, so we have a look, as we said, in a phylogenetic tree, we start at the roots um, and we move up and each time there's a branching off, then that would be a speciation event. And here we find the Ardipithecus group um, of um, organisms or ancestors. Then we branch here and we find the Australopithecus group um, that are here and we're going to study them. And then the branch carries on and we find the Paranthropus group and then we find um, the homo group. And we are at the top. And as you can see, out of all these species, none of them are on the um, present or on the line that indicates the present, except homo sapiens. So all the other species on this diagram are extinct, and we are the only species that is extant. Okay. Right, now let's have a look at the characteristics that humans and apes have in common. Okay, so we can start, when we have a look, and it's very easy to, to study this or learn this, um, because it's quite important and you frequently are asked questions on it in the exams. But you start at the top. You work your way down. It's your body um, that, you know, you can work it from. So you actually have kind of your crib notes with you. All right, so we'll start at the top and we have a look here at the head. And what we have is we have a large brain. It's much larger than other um, animals. So 
we have that in common. Then another feature that we have in common is that we have eyes in front. So in other words, our eyes face forward. And remember when we studied the eye, we learned that it gave us stereoscopic or binocular vision, which allows you to have 3D or depth perception. So your vision, you're able to then perceive um, depth, distance, and those kind of things. So um, that's another characteristic that we have in common. And then if we move down to the upper limb, so if we have a look here at the upper limb, um, we see that there's quite a few um, characteristics that we have in common. And the first thing is that we have freely rotating arms. So in other words, if we had to, we can actually move our arm around completely. It rotates, um, it's freely rotating, unlike other animals that would not be able to move their limbs in a 360 degree um, movement. All right, and then the second point that we, we have a look at, and yeah, we need to be specific because this is the whole arm including the hand, is the upper limb. But we're looking at this only part of the arm. It's the upper arm. Okay, so we need to distinguish between that. So we have a long upper arm. So this segment uh, of the upper limb is our, of our arm is long. We also have rotation around the elbow joint. So in other words, we can move our arms. It gives us a little bit um, a more free movement more dexterity that we can then maneuver, manipulate, handle, use um, tools and uh, whatever uh, implements that we have. Okay, so we have rotation around the elbows. We also then have bare fingertips um, and nails instead of claws. So we don't have any hair or we don't have padding or anything like that on our fingertips. We also have nails and we don't have claws. Um, so that's uh, uh, something that is in common. And then the, the, the next thing on our upper limb that we have a look at is our opposable thumb. And opposable means that it works. If you have a look at your hand, your fingers are sort of are facing this direction and your thumb in a different direction and it works opposite to your fingers. So we don't have a thumb here that's going to work in the same direction or the fifth digit is not placed here next to uh, your other fingers. So in other words, it can help you to grip. It helps us with precision movement. I can pick up something um, and, you know, something small. Uh, I can do small things. So it basically um, sets us apart from other animals who don't have that opposable thumb. All right. And then the last thing that we have a look at is that we can, we have an upright posture. Right, so let's have a look here. These diagrams, the two here, this one shows nicely where we can see the hands um, are not padded as well as we have, so they bare fingertips and we have nails uh, instead of claws. Okay, so we can see bare fingertips and nails instead of claws. Um, and then, let's see, sorry. Then if we have a look at this diagram here, we can see that there's our opposable thumb. So us as well as other primates have that opposable thumb and that then gives us um, that we are able to grip things, pick up things, hold things, um, gives us power and it gives us precision movement. Okay, and that, um, and that basically uh, is different to if we have a look at the rest of the animal kingdom. Okay, so that's, we've come to the end of this segment. We're now going to take a short break um, and we'll see you after the break. Mm -hmm.